The following podcast is brought to you by Patreon.com slash WrestleMediaCA. Like what you hear? Want more of it ad-free, uncensored, and earlier? Sign up today at Patreon.com slash WrestleMediaCA and start getting more for as little as $2 a month. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for your main event, where news and opinions on the sport of kings collide. WrestleMedia is proud to present The Wrestling Show. Welcome to The Wrestling Show, part of WrestleMedia, where everything is wrestling and wrestling is everything. I'm at Adam Conta. That's at Matthew Sukram. Before we get into our week, I want to tell you about some of the places we are going to be this weekend, particularly Cottage Country Comic Con. We are going to be there and we will not be alone. We will have representatives from Northland Wrestling with us where we will be giving away a family pack of four tickets to the Feel the Bang event coming up on May the 25th. We're going to have some uh, some big time players from the promotion there, including uh, general manager Adam Andrews, as well as owner and uh, pr- r- owner wrestler uh, Dan Pagozo, a.k.a. Dan Jarris, who has the fight of his life coming up at Field the Bang against Tomer Shalom. It's an I quit match and the ownership of the company is on the line. Come on out, talk to Dan about that match, what he plans on doing to Tomer, and get yourself a a chance to win those four-pack of tickets. Trust me, this is not a match you are going to want to miss. Also, there's a guy going to be there. You may have heard of him. WWE Hall of Famer Greg the Hammer Valentine. I'm going to go get my picture taken with him and then hopefully get him to come on the show because I would love to have Greg on the show. Of course, coming up after that, June 15th, you know it, you love it. We've been talking about it nonstop. Chinlock Wrestling and House of Hardcore presents Chinlock 5 at the Leon Center. June 15th in Kingston, Ontario. Of course, that's all part of the Legends Convention happening earlier in the day as well. Mark Henry, Brett the Hitman Hart, the uh, the Brain Busters, Four Horsemen, Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson, Billy Gunn, Swoggle, Jimmy Corderas, Tommy Dreamer, and a whole lot more. Some of the talent in the evening. Willie Mack is scheduled to be there. Of course, the Chinlock Rumble will be making its return. Madison Rain has been announced. She's going to be on this week's episode of Women Crush Wrestling, so make sure you're tuned out for uh, tuned in for that one uh and then on june 29th we're going to go to renfrew ontario for queen street entertainment and their live pro wrestling event featuring cecil nix addy star and a whole lot more if you need all that information head over to wrestlemedia.ca and click the on the road button so you can see where we are going to be l-i-v-e live in your neck of the woods and while you're there Sign up for our newsletter. It's free. It's weekly. It lets you know what's happening in the world of WrestleMedia and get you access to some exclusive contents just for our newsletter people and some exclusive contests just for our newsletter people. So do yourself a favor and sign up for that now and follow us. Twitter, Facebook. Our Facebook is blowing up right now. So be a part of the crowd. Be a sheep. Uh, go and, uh, and, and uh, what is it? Cave into peer pressure and uh, be, join us on Facebook. Like us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. Do all the social media stuff uh, that Matt just had training for. And then, uh, you know, be a part of the WrestleMedia revolution. And finally, if you really want to support us in a big time way, head over to patreon.com slash WrestleMedia CA. Right now, if you're listening to this for free on WrestleMedia.ca, you're listening to the free version, but we have versions on our Patreon that'll get you more content and exclusive content. And all for just a few ducats in the bucket each and every single month. It's how we uh, pay the bills, in my case, quite literally. So please support us over at patreon.com slash WrestleMedia CA. All right, all the shillings out of the way, Matt. How has your time away from the uh, Russell Media Studios here at Casa de Conta been for you? What have you been up to, man? Working. Yeah. Oh, you got one of those job things? One of you got one of those job gimmicks? I do. My uh, my gimmick is that I work. Okay. I had a little bit of a gimmick change last month, so uh, I've got a new gimmick now, which is Adam the Unemployed. It's not as uh, you know, it's not as great a gimmick. As I used to have, but you know, I mean, it doesn't pay as well. It's not a main event gimmick. You know, it's a lower mid card gimmick, but thankfully to the folks over at patreon.com slash wrestle media CA, uh, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, get by on that merch money (laughs) that I got going. Just got to autograph it. Yeah, really. That's all I got to do. Put my John Hancock on it. That's it. I mean, some of the guys that we've been interacting with are charging money, charging me money for their autographs. Exactly. So why can't I do the same for them? That's, that's what I'm it. saying. Exactly. Yeah, that's right, Ken Shamrock. You're going to pay me 20 bucks. 
I'm kidding, Ken. I'm sorry. Please don't hurt me. Okay, I know you could do it in a second. Please don't. Please don't slap my neck. Okay. When uh when are you gonna talk about that? Actually, let's talk about it right now. Um, that's a complete joke because I'll tell you something. My experience with Ken Shamrock over the weekend at the Rock Solid Wrestling event, Wrestling Night in Collingwood 8, Danger Zone, which is how you have to say it, especially if you watch Archer. What an incredible night. The wrestling fans there are perfect. And when I say perfect, I mean that they cheered in all the right places. They booed in all the right places. I was a kid again watching that show. And not just because I was watching one of my favorite wrestlers as a kid, which I'll get into in a minute. But because that crowd was like a crowd from the 1980s or the 1990s, they were just into everything. And I got no problem with, you know, crowds who are, are hip to the industry and, and want to do a bit more and whatnot. I mean, God bless all wrestling fans, even the ones that I really don't like a lot. God bless them because it means they're, they're feeding the industry that I love and will hopefully make a, a living off talking about one day uh, or patreon.com. Uh, but I love going to wrestling shows where the fans are into everything that is happening. And these fans ate everything up with a spoon. And I'm not saying that because, oh, it wasn't that great. And they were just eating it up anyway. They were just really forgiving fans. The show quality was amazing. It was such a great show from top to bottom, had a little bit of everything. It really was like a a 1980s or 90s WWF show, which to me is the greatest stuff in the whole world. That's the stuff I grew up on. It's the stuff I love. So I had a blast with it. And those fans were enjoying it. They were just loving it for what it was, you know? Uh, um, Now, one of the other interesting aspects of it was that I was working as ring announcer that night. There was actually two of us, me and another guy named Tom, Tom served as the host of the show. He was talking about all the sponsors and I was yelling wrestlers names really loudly into a microphone, which I kind of do every week here on this show. You sure do. Right. So, I mean, it was a pretty easy, natural gig for me. Had a great time doing that. Um, One of the highlights for the show was getting to do the Bruce Buffer style introductions for the main event. Because the main event, for those of you who haven't been listening to us all uh, last couple weeks, shame on you, by the way was Jake O'Reilly. But we're, we're thankful you're here now. We are, yes, yes. Thank goodness you smartened up. Uh, that'd be a good name for a podcast, don't you think? Smarten up? Thank goodness you smartened up? <laughs> Maybe. If you want to go really long with it, I guess. Smart, get, get smartened up? Get smartened up? Get smart? No, that's another show. You that's a that. different thing. Let us know what you think over at uh, our Facebook for or Twitter. Our fake show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, we're always looking for new stuff to give our patrons. It's true. So, I mean, we could do something like that. Uh, if you get the support over at patreon.com slash Um The Jake O'Reilly was in the main event. He was on our show last week. He was our guest last week. And he was talking about how cool this was for him because Ken Shamrock was one of his favorites. And being a guy who studies Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you know, Ken Shamrock was a guy who he always had on his radar as a person to look up to. Ken Shamrock was one of my favorite wrestlers during the Attitude Era. I was a huge Ken Shamrock fan. Those, uh, our listeners who are actually patrons, uh, will probably remember me talking about my love for Ken Shamrock on one of our Patreon exclusive shows. I was there. Because back in 1997, when I went to this independent show, one of my thoughts as a kid was like, oh, God, I hope they have Ken Shamrock T-shirts because I want a Ken Shamrock T-shirt. Of course, this was an indie show, so he wasn't there. But uh, now he's on indie shows now uh, because he's a legend and he can make a a good payday and uh, give some good advice to the uh, younger generation. Man, this main event was awesome. Uh, I got to do the Bruce Buffer style ring introductions because it was a submission match. And of course, Ken Shamrock is there. So they did it UFC style, which was so cool and so much fun. And I got to do the whole Bruce Buffer style where it was the, the uh, you know, what? How was it like that? Ken Shamrock. You know how Bruce yes. Buffer. I, I'm, I'm not doing it good here. If I was to do it the way I wanted to do it, I'd have to break everybody's eardrums with the level of volume. And I don't want to do that. So forget that. Watching Ken Shamrock was awesome man like jake and cody deaner put on a phenomenal match like anybody right now who is sleeping on cody deaner and jake o'reilly as talents needs to wake the hell up because those two guys are absolute masters of their craft they had the crowd eating out of the palm of their hands for every single thing they did uh asher benjamin there as a manager he i think is one of the best heel managers in the in in the ontario indie scene right now he was so great shamrock was awesome because he has such presence that dude is a legend and you know it the minute you see him and the minute he walks into room 
But the, what makes him awesome and what elevates him is he does not either either he doesn't know it or he knows it, but chooses not to show it. He is such a cool guy. Ken Shamrock is one hundred percent down to earth, cool dude. Like easily, easily the coolest legend I've ever met in the business. Like just super, super nice, super, super just chill. Took time with everybody, every fan, every crew wow. member who wanted to like a little piece of his time. Just super nonchalant. Just very much, yeah, man, that's cool. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Just super, totally nice guy. Like we went, we, we went out with him at Boston Pizza afterwards. And it was great because there wasn't a lot of people there because it was late. But some fans did come by and they were like, oh my God, dude, you're Ken Shamrock. And he's just like, yeah, how's it going, man? Wasn't big star about anything. Never bush. It didn't uh, didn't make anybody shake his hand. You know, didn't pull a Randy Orton. Just <laughs> just honest to goodness. Just one of the nicest nicest WWE legend encounters I've ever had. So if there's any promoters looking to hire on a really cool guy, do your show. Uh, seriously consider Ken Shamrock because the dude was absolutely a dream to work with. And uh, just a sweetheart of a guy, really, really nice guy as well. You should also consider Adam Conton for ring announcer ah, for any of you independent. You. You're so sweet. I've seen you do it. <laughs> You're very good. Uh, he was absolutely cool. And it was funny because I was having a conversation with John, who was one of the promoters for the event. And he talked about how uh, this Collingwood show that Rock Solid Wrestling does every single year, it's like their res- version of WrestleMania. It's their biggest show of the year. And he said it's funny because all the legends who get brought on, because they bring in a big legend every year, it always goes the same way, which is when they start out the night, it's always, well, I don't bump, brother. You know, it's a, uh, which, it, really? well, listen, in some of those cases, I can understand. Ricky Steamboat was one example that they gave, and that dude so has had. Physically, they can't Physically, bump. Ted DiBiase was another guy, right? Um, so, or like, like Demolition came in. Now, of course, they had, you know, matches and stuff. So Demolition did. So, but a, a lot of times when the legends, and this is just in general, when legends come, they're like, this is what I don't do. I don't do this. I don't do this. Because, you know, they're there to make money, and let's be fake, and let's be honest, a lot of these guys are older. Mm-hmm. So, they don't want to put their body through a lot, right? And plus, it's the indies. You never know what kind of crowd you're going to get out there. Mm-hmm. And if you've only got so many bumps, and if you're old and hurting and beat up... You're not doing it in, th- front, of, in front of 300 people. Exactly. Exactly. Now, the Collingwood shows always draw huge crowds. And again, going back to what I said at the beginning of my story, this crowd is always hot. Always, always, always hot. And John told me that the fun thing is, inevitably, they all end up bumping or doing way more than they expected to. He said, he told me a funny story about Steamboat. He said, you know, Steamboat started off saying, you know, I'm not going to do any bumps, you know, but, you know, I'll come in there and I'll referee and stuff. It's like, okay, that's cool, man. And then, you know, as the night went on, he saw the people and he was like, okay, um, you know, maybe uh, we'll come in and you guys come in and I'll chop that guy and then you'll get the DDT. He's like, okay, cool, cool. And then he comes back and says, okay, so uh, maybe you come in, I'll chop that guy, and then I come over and I'll chop that other guy, and then you guys will do the... And he said, basically, he just kept coming back and back every time and just adding something new for him to do. <laughs> and then I pin him, and I become champion. <laughs> but I love that. Like, that's a cool story because it, it shows two things. Number one, it's a great compliment to Rock Solid and the team Absolutely. and his promotion team in Collingwood because it shows that, you know, when you put on a product that the fans are into, the guys get into it, right? Um, he said Ted DiBiase had once said that he bumps two times a year. He only bumps twice a year. That's his limit. And after the show was done, he came up to them and said, I wish I, I wish I would have used one of my bumps tonight because uh, it was such a good show. Yeah. So we were playfully guessing, like, do you think Shamrock? What's, what do you think his involvement will be? He's like, we don't know. He's like, because he's got that head injury or like he's got a neck injury or something. Like he's not supposed to be bumping. Right. Um, and then there is a point during the match where there's the big chaos and everything's broken down and Shamrock comes in and he's got a hold of Benjamin. He turns around and Jake just clotheslines the crap out of him. Wow. And Ken took a huge bump and then like held onto the back of his head and sold like, like, like Jake had just killed him. It was amazing. That's to... awesome. It and if you've so ever seen awesome. Jake O'Reilly give a clothesline, yeah. you, you know, like if the guy sells it properly, you believe it. It was so cool to see Ken do that for Jake and just, yeah. be like, and, and, it, and again, it goes to show like how 
good the events are put on, how professional it was, that a guy like Ken Shamrock, who didn't have to do any of that, nope. was like, I'm going to do a little something, give this kid a, a rub, right? And holy crap, I got to tell you, just as a fan, I was marking out completely because, man, oh, man, was it ever awesome to see that. And then to have and how come... much heat did O'Reilly get oh, on him? <laughs> dude, dude, scorching the surface of the sun. It was so hot. And then, of course, when you get the comeback, you know, with, you know, Shamrock giving his, his belly to belly suplexes and then putting on the ankle lock, right? And Diener's putting on the ankle lock too, and they're both there and the crowd's going nuts. And what? What a moment. And the whole crowd That's chanting awesome. DDT, DDT for Jake or, or for uh, Cody. It was an awesome night. Like, I just can't say how, what a great time I had at the event. If you missed out, man, you really, really missed out. So make sure you check out. Uh, their uh, upcoming event in Hanover, which I believe is June the 9th. I could be wrong on that. It might be June 8th or 9th. We'll probably have some details over at WrestleMedia CA, CA, so go check that out. They're bringing in Tito Santana. I don't know if he'll bump like Ken did, but, uh, uh, you know, it was, I'll tell you, it was a great experience. And my my experience with, with meeting Ken Shamrock and being with those guys on that night was really awesome. But I will say this. Um, I did learn a few things that night as well, aside from the fact that those shows are awesome and Ken Shamrock is just even better than I could have hoped for. Um, number one, I need to bring somebody with me when I do these shows because I trying to balance being the ring announcer and also being a huge shill for Wrestle Media just did not work. Now, we still had a lot of people that came and checked out our booth and signed up for our newsletter, which you should also do at WrestleMedia.ca. Thank you, by the way, to everybody who did show up and sign up for the newsletter and enter our raffle. I really, really appreciate that you gave us the time of day. I hope that you're listening to us right now. I hope that you got our card and you said, you know what, I'm going to give these guys a little look-see. And maybe you saw our special guest at the title of this and you were like, oh, I was a big fan of that guy growing up. Uh, we're going to get to him in just a moment. And... uh and then here we are. And so thank you guys for doing that. But I'll tell you, I really wish I had someone like you, Matt, there at the table while I went and did some ring announcer stuff or got stuff signed by Ken Shamrock because I got a couple of items signed by uh, the world's most dangerous man that you listeners may or may not have an opportunity to win eventually. So maybe keep up to date with us as a, your own benefit would be a good idea. If I sign up for the newsletter, can I get the Ken Shamrock stuff? Uh, yeah, but you have to fight Ken for it. That's the oh. only. That's the. We do allow our employees to 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 win the stuff, but you got to fight Ken Shamrock. I don't know. It. I mean, I wasn't at the event, but I did see the picture, and uh, <laughs> that guy. Holy cow, man! Like his arms were bigger than the table. I he he may be the just the most in shape guy I've ever met in my life. Wow. That guy I was going to say such incredible shape because because you met Triple H earlier this year, too. Yeah. Or last year, I guess. So who who was bigger physically like just muscle mass? Because I've got to say it's got to be Shamrock. I like, think mass wise, I think H was a little bit bigger. OK. Mass wise, he maybe Triple H. Um, you know what, though? I don't know, because Triple H had, would look like he'd been cutting. Yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, they probably were about equal. OK. About equal mass size. But I'll tell you something. Shamrock was looking competition ready. Okay, because I was gonna say like he he I mean, looked to be like fair, he he was wearing like you know MMA gear, right? So like he was ready. <laughs> yeah, he he looked like the like the picture I saw. I was say you saw the picture. He looked like he could have been auditioning for the next Rambo movie. Well, you know, as I mentioned on last week's interview with Jake O'Reilly, uh, he was calling out Brian Cage current impact wrestling champion that's right he was so i'm hearing some rumors that he's looking to maybe wow. start hey look and if he does i'm bandwagon jumper number one man no i'm kidding. right there because yeah I, I i would love to see him back in the ring doing especially with that magic he made over uh the weekend when i was there man it was fantastic all right so i think i've talked about that long enough uh it was a great experience thank you everyone for coming out to that i certainly hope that rock solid wrestling will allow us to come back again and Hire me on to yell wrestlers' names really loudly into a microphone because it was a ton of fun. Let's talk about this week's guest. Oh! Hacksaw Jim Duggan's going to be on the show a little bit later. Very excited about that. A lot of people don't know this, but I used to wrestle. Uh, I wrestled for about a cup of coffee in the Ontario Indy scene, and easily the greatest achievement of my career was I got to wrestle Hacksaw Jim Duggan in my hometown of Napanee, Ontario, in front of not my parents because they didn't like wrestling, so they wouldn't come and watch that. But did Avril come? Avril did not come. Ah, uh, come sorry. on! So she won't go to Chinlock. She didn't go watch <laughs> you wrestle Jim Duggan. No, 
Uh, is she uh, busy or something? I think she may have a thing or two going on these days. Yeah. So unfortunately, she didn't watch me get pummeled by uh, the winner <laughs> of the first Royal Rumble. Uh, we do talk about the first Royal Rumble. We talk about Gino Hernandez. Uh, now, how much of that you'll get to hear will depend on your level of participation with Wrestle Media. If you're listening to us for free, you're going to get a little bit because you know we want to give you a little something. But if you want to hear the full thing, you got to head over to Patreon and, and sign up there. Did you ask him if he was ever disappointed that he didn't get a WrestleMania main event out of winning the Rumble? I uh, was going to ask him about that, and our conversation just ended up going in other places. I did ask him about two WrestleMania moments that he had specifically, okay. though. So which ones? You'll have to tune in. I just think it. that would be interesting for a, a, a guy that, you know, first ever Royal Rumble winner, and that's it. Well, I mean, right? t- they then they didn't have the stipulation. They didn't start handing that out till ninety three. Exactly. So I mean, I mean, technically, there's been a couple of guys that have won it that didn't get to main event. Right. Actually, it's funny you say that because the first year that the championship was on the line in ninety two, Ric Flair didn't was even get it? to go on last either. <laughs> he was in the middle of the card with Randy Savage. Hogan went on last. Because Hogan must pose. Of course he did. Hogan must pose, baby. (laughs) Hey, this is a commercial for Patreon.com slash WrestleMediaCA, where you can get early access to episodes of your favorite WrestleMedia shows, get full uncut and uncensored versions of your favorite shows, and more. Don't want to hear this commercial on your podcast anymore? Sign up at our main event tier and get these episodes ad-free. Want to hear your own commercial here instead of ours? We've got tiers for that, too. Visit patreon.com slash WrestleMedia CA and join the WrestleMedia revolution today. I'm so excited to be on the line today with an absolute legend, and I mean that in every sense of the word, WWE Hall of Famer, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan. Jim, welcome to WrestleMedia. Well, thanks, Adam, but you know the first thing Hacksaw has to do is give a big ho! Ho! Kind of fires me up nowadays, gets me going. That's a pretty good ho, I said. Everybody should start the morning off with a good hoe. <laughs> you know, that uh, that could be a T-shirt. Uh, if you want to sell that at your upcoming appearances, <laughs> I won't even take a cut for that. That's a great idea. Uh, uh, I Hacks- just said you got to be careful hoeing in New York, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, something you would, uh, I wouldn't say that you know about, but you certainly know that area pretty well. Uh, you're from Glen Falls. Uh, and I wonder Yeah, about- a, a small yeah, a nice little town uh, up in upstate New York, actually closer to Montreal than New York City, up in the Adirondack Mountains. And, you know, you always hear all these tragic stories about guys in wrestling that are growing up in these really heartache-type situations. I joke, I tell folks, I, I grew up in Mayberry. I, I had a great upbringing. My, my three older sisters, my pop was chief of police in my town. My mom was great. Uh, so what? Uh, it was a, I had a great upbringing. I had a, a tough upbringing in wrestling. Now, uh, I'm going to start off this interview by talking about something maybe a little controversial, maybe something that a lot of people, yourself included, you may not want getting out there. Now, I know that you're the Patriot. You're you're Mr. America USA. But I got to tell you, I'm starting to feel like you kind of have a special place in your heart for your neighbor to the north because I, I feel like you've come to Canada often and i feel like you've always had a lot of respect for canada and you have a very strong contingency of canadian fans and i wanted to ask you if maybe part of that has to do with the fact that you grew up so close to us canucks yeah i don't know it's and of course i had a little bit of a run with the uh argos back in uh 1978 i was with them for a couple of games uh but i've always uh enjoyed it of course uh, it's such a hotbed for wrestling up there I mean, back in the old days with Billy Red Lions and uh, Maple Leaf Garden, and, and it was just, uh, just, just the history of wrestling up there. Uh, uh, I think Court Fakes are just big wrestling fans up there, and I'm just lucky enough to be part of that golden generation, you know, with Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, uh, Ultimate Warrior. That was kind of the golden age of wrestling, like the old WWF. And, and that's what these shows are. You know, with, you know I tell folks, uh, it's not a stand-up show for jokes and stuff. It's stories about you know, wrestling Andre the Giant and traveling with Dick Roberts and pulling ribs with Owen and Bret Hart. It's uh, you know, and it's a positive look at wrestling. Uh, so many folks hear the, the negative stuff. They see the movie The Wrestler with that not Mickey York in it, and they assume that all wrestlers are like that. It's, it's been a great business for me. I've, I've been with my wife. We just celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. 
My my youngest daughter just graduated from college earlier this week. Uh, you know, I never had to go to rehab for booze or drugs. I, I did a lot of both. I can't throw no stones, but I just never had that addictive type personality. And to this day, at at, at sixty five, I still travel the world, uh, being remembered from times back in the WWF. It's uh, amazing. Well, first and foremost, uh, congratulations on both the anniversary and um, the uh, your daughter graduating from college. That's a great accomplishment. Yeah, and uh, yeah. thanks. That's um, that's awesome. Uh, secondly, uh, I want to go back to the tour that you were just talking about. Uh, you were going to be appearing in a number of different Canadian cities, uh, Brantford, Niagara Falls, Alliston, Oshawa, Brockville, Ottawa, London. Then you're heading out to the East Coast. Got to be careful out there. That you better make sure you pack your two by four out that way. <laughs> Newfoundland, Labrador. Then you're coming over to the west. Winnipeg, Lethbridge, Edmonton, and Calgary. We're going to have all those dates listed up on our website as well. Uh, all throughout the entire month of May. I, I I don't mean any disrespect when I say this, but I mean you know you are not as young as you used to be, and I mean you used to go very hard back in the day when you were wrestling. But you know doing these month long shows, I mean, does it take a lot out of you or is it just are you just happy to not be having to bump every night <laughs> well, no actually it's like a rookie vacation you know I, uh, I bring, I'm bringing my wife with me she's never been to Newfoundland before or out western uh, Canada with Calgary and we're going to stay with Brett a couple of days and get to see him uh-huh. so it's, it's actually like, it's like a working vacation and it just uh, a, cu- a couple of weeks ago not last week and the weekend before we were over in Liverpool, England. I, I brought her with me over there. We did a, a WrestleCon. Undertaker was there, Flair, Brett. Uh, it's like old home went for us guys when they had these wrestle, wrestling conventions. <laughs> but it's rare for Undertaker to be on one. So the, the convention was off the hook. But uh, <laughs> like I said, it was great. And now we're going to go up to Canada and we're putting together a tour to uh, Germany in October. Wow. So it's uh, it's amazing the appeal of professional wrestling around the world. You know, I, I joke, I do a lot of charity events with NFL guys. I'm always like, world champions? <laughs> Where in the world do you fellas go? <laughs> wrestling, in, in, in my 40 years, I've wrestled every state in the Union, uh, every province in Canada, including the Northwest Territory, up in Toyotuck, up above the Arctic Circle. In uh, 30 different countries. Uh, it's hard to even think of 30 countries, but uh, it's crazy the appeal of professional wrestling around the world. And one of the, if it's not the hotbed in the world, is, is Canada. I mean, uh, I know the WWE goes up there. So many of the current WWE talent came out of Canada. Uh, the independent circuit up there is great. I think people know them. And, uh, you know, and those are the kids that are, are going against all odds to try to make it. You know, like, when I first saw Kevin Owens, I said, there's no way this kid's going to make it. I don't think he's got it. But there's a guy that had the drive, the desire, the work ethic, and he proved me wrong, and he made it. I tell kids, you've got a better chance of playing in the NHL than you do make it in your WWE, just a numbers game, you know? That's just a small clip of what we've got in store for you over at patreon.com slash WrestleMedia CA. If you want to hear the full interview, that's the place to do it for just a few ducats in the bucket each and every single month. All right, Matt. So I think we've all but wrapped up everything we want to talk about this week. Anything else you want to bring up before we send her, send her home? Money in the Bank looks like it's going to be a pay-per-view that could really dictate a lot of interesting concepts going forward but it could also be one of those pay-per-views where they just play everything safe and you go ah oh, i'm glad i watched that for four hours <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out this sunday if you want to get our thoughts on who's going to win all the matches make sure that you subscribe at patreon.com slash wrestlemedia ca our main event tiers and up get their quick picks and that's what we'll have for you there as for next week we're going to have another special guest matt this one He's going to be involved with Northland Wrestling and Feel the Bang. He's the man who will challenge Lionel Knight for the championship, the king of the North Championship, the six foot six, 300 pound big country from Australia, and also the man who just recently came back from Orlando, Florida. What was he doing there? Oh, no big deal. Just getting a tryout with the WWE. Talking about Cadman Turner. He's going to be on the show, and I can't wait for you guys 
to hear his story. It's absolutely incredible. But that's next week. Until this week, uh, I want to say thanks very much, guys. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to share this podcast with friends, enemies, and anyone else who likes to hear a little bit of wrestling news and opinions. Please make sure you support us by liking, sharing, and uh, giving us a rating. If you got five stars that you can spare over on iTunes or anywhere else that you listen to fine podcasts, please do so. Don't forget to like and follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Sign up for our newsletter at WrestleMedia.ca, where you can check out everything WrestleMedia-related, podcasts, blogs, videos, and the like. Don't forget to check us out on the road. And, of course, support us at Patreon.com slash WrestleMediaCA. Until next week, I'm at Adam Conta. That's at Matthew Sucrum. And you know what to do. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat. This has been a presentation of WrestleMedia, where everything is wrestling and wrestling is everything. Here's what you're missing out on right now over at Patreon.com slash WrestleMediaCA. My career went on, my character got a little sillier and sillier. I, mean, I was the, the king of wrestling, and I joked, I said I had to take the crown, the flag, the board, the thumb, the tongue, the hoe, and the crossed eyes. <laughs> you know, and then I could get a little more serious in the ring. But, uh, yeah, I, could, uh, I worked with Harley, I, I beat Harley for the uh, Cape and Crown and, and won a slam for best hit of the year with Harley. That's right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and, and, and there's uh, a lot of guys... Uh, like now with the Bray Wyatt, a lot of folks are like uh, upset with his new character. But there's a guy that's embracing his new character. Oh yeah. One man gang wasn't real happy with a king, <laughs> but he embraced it. Uh, Terry Taylor wasn't happy with Red Rooster, and he just did it half heartedly, and it didn't work. So a true pro like Bray Wyatt. Uh, they give you an opportunity to take the ball and run with it. Make the best out of it. Want more? Sign up now at patreon.com slash WrestleMedia CA.